Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. The main desire of mine with Larger Story is to what, what it's like to be a part of the younger generation's spiritual journey. I've spoken with so many people over these last couple of years, um, of people who first became aware of, of, of Larry Crabb as an author in college, and it stuck. Something actually connected with them in that. So it really gives us hope in realizing that we do have the opportunity to connect with the younger generation. Well, today I'm joined by two of my favorite people, my daughter, Josie, and my soon-to-be son-in-law, Justin. Thanks for joining me today, guys. How are y'all doing? We're doing good. It's uh, it's so good to be able to talk to you and uh, do this with you tonight. Mm -hmm. We're both really excited. <laughs> well, that makes three of us. And uh, also, Josie, your mom is sitting just on the other side here listening to what we're saying, because she's super excited about this too. I've, I've actually chatted with some people saying I get a chance to interview my daughter and my soon-to-be son-in-law about getting married and about the marriage builder the dad wrote. And um, they're just like, wow, that's such an incredible thing. And um, I, I, I'm just super excited. One of the things that stands out to me as I've reviewed marriage builder is it's, and, and dad even says this, pop, pop. And, and if I, folks, if I refer to uh, Dad or Pop Pop, we're talking about Larry Crab here, so you know. But Pop Pop is what we will, will probably refer to him today as uh, That's mostly. How we know him. That's how we know him as Pop Pop. But um, he said that this is a book. He even says it in the introduction. You guys can remember. Um, that's timeless. There's um, there's something about this book that I, I think it's because it's based in scripture, but it could it could be written to married couples 200 years from now or 200 years ago. And um, I think that's what really does kind of define a classic. And I would say, and I think the the, the viewers of these webinars of, my, of of larger stories with the book of the month would say, um, you say that about most of your dad's books, but this was one that um, that really struck me as important, especially for married couples. Tell me, guys, mom and I decided to send this book to you, Josie and Justin. Um, what was it? A couple months ago? When did we send this book to you guys? Yeah, it was about three or four months ago. Over the summer. We read it over the summer. So so how how familiar, I mean, what, what are the kind of things that, that stick with you about this book as you're and I know it's been a while since you've read it, but what are the things that you kind of kind of kind of grabbed you as you were reading this book? I think during this book, A, we went through this, the discussion guide as we read the chapters and just being able to think through and talk about those questions with each other. Uh, was really impactful in how we communicate with each other. Um, I think that's one of the biggest things that stuck out with us in the from the book was how we communicate with each other, um, both in good times and bad times, and you know, coming to each other honestly and vulnerably with our feelings. Um, and I think we've carried that on decently <laughs> since we uh, read the book. How did you guys read it? What did you guys do? So we actually, we would hand it off and we would read a certain number of pages and then hand it off to the next person. We would read it aloud to each other. And then uh, whenever we found something we wanted to discuss, we would talk about it or anything like that. And then go through the discussion guide together. We didn't, I know in the book it says to write everything down, but we would go through and talk through all the questions and uh, both we would do it we'd give our own answers and then talk about them and how it uh relates to us yeah why don't, why don't you guys tell the audience a little bit today about how you guys met and just so the audience is aware of what's going on is uh, those of you watching Josie and Justin are getting married in a few weeks and um and so we're super excited about that but tell us tell us how you guys how you guys met and and how the the relationship kind of evolved we met in college so Pretty much all of all throughout college, we had a lot of mutual friends and somehow never crossed paths. And so there was a mutual friend of ours who thought that we would get along and wanted to set us up. And that never actually ended up happening, but we were um, at a college event and he just sat down next to me. And I was like, oh, you're the guy that she was talking about. And uh Ever since that night, we just got along and kind of felt something special. And yeah, it took some convincing, but I <laughs> finally got to actually talk to her. Um, and once that happened, uh, we dated for a while. And then obviously in uh, May, 
or was it March of 2020 COVID hit. <clears throat> and then I got to actually, since I was trapped in my apartment, you guys were kind enough to take me in. And then that's really, I feel we had a strong relationship going into that. But at that point, I got to come grow closer to you guys. I got to grow a lot closer to her. Um, we were together all the time. Um, I got to really know her family, you guys, uh, which was a huge part of what I was looking for. Because you, you lived with us for three months plus. Yeah, yeah. And I come from a very close family. So yep. it was really important for me to get to know you guys too. And uh, once that happened, it was, I knew things were headed in a really good, really good direction. Yeah. And then I picked up my life and moved to Oklahoma. So <laughs> we knew something was happening at that point for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you say that your you, one of your bigger takeaways from the the book, the Marriage Builder, was the the whole communication thing. Um, as you guys are getting ready to get married, what are some of the challenges that you anticipate? What are some of the 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 obstacles or hurdles that you guys maybe you're thinking about a little bit? Oh, I think it's going to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, beautiful, Joe. Well, I, I, if Pop Pop were here, he'd say, "Keep thinking that." I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in the book, it actually goes through how to. There's one story that stands out to me that uh, Pop Pop talked about in the book, where he was actually at a, a Bible study with uh, Nana, or Nan, and uh, <laughs> they were discussing something, and uh, she said a point, and he, I guess, retorted that point in a way that she didn't like, and. Uh, and then on their way home, she wasn't, wasn't too happy with him. He couldn't tell why. And then he uh, asked her about it. And then uh, they went back and forth. And he said he really didn't come at it in a good way. He was defending his own position and uh, actually attacking her in his defense. And uh, that was something that really stood out to me with uh, when issues come along, um, how to actually handle those in a way that's going to create growth or actually bring you closer together through that instead of just trying to defend yourself and pushing the other person away uh, yeah i would say that's one of the biggest lessons we've taken away because even through conversations we've had uh post the book uh, that's something that we talk about and remember and the way that we talk to each other through tough arguments whatever it is yeah. but that's something that we've really worked on mm -hmm. yeah and it was something that I didn't really realize it was something I was doing until we read that book or that I don't think either of us really did that uh, when we did something wrong um, we didn't really know how to communicate to get through it to actually get to a better spot we were just going through this cycle of forgetting it and just letting it go but once we read that we realized that we can actually talk through this in a productive way and uh, both of us end up feeling good on the other side it might take a while but we will end up in a better spot it's amazing as we've looked at this book and and your mom and i just went through this a little bit this morning as i was preparing for our time tonight and it's such a practical book much more so than i think what you would consider a typical pop pop dr larry crab book would be oh yeah uh, so oftentimes dad's read uh, other books that he's written that people are just, these are just, it's above me. I don't understand it. It's confusing. It's, it's whatever it is, but this one, there's so many practical pieces in there. Even in the book, he talks about, you know, the, the husband says this, the wife says this, and he, he goes through all these things. Some of the things, and I can remember when dad was writing this book, he wrote the book in 1982. <clears throat> I would have been an eighth grader in eighth grade uh, in junior high, uh, moving into ninth grade. And he talked about the whole the whole issues of security and significance, manipulation versus ministry, goals versus desires. I mean, these are all subjects that I remember him wrestling with. And I really think, too, that one of the things that came out of this book, aside from, a, I think, a classic marriage book, is the red dot. Where are you guys at? So as, as I ask you guys these questions tonight, which I'm super excited to do, and I, I've got a, a few questions from other people because they said... We don't just want the dad asking all the questions tonight. So, um, but but what does it mean to have? And this is a question that I've 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 wrestled with at some level in in, in many ways. You you know your mom and I've been married for almost thirty years now, and 
Um, but what does it mean to have a Christian marriage? Um, and, and Pop talks a little bit about that in the book, but what do you guys think about that? I mean, it's putting God first and foremost in your marriage, your relationship, and how you think about and treat your partner. Um, hmm. Easier said than done, of course. <laughs> That's also a massive thought that comes into my mind. But um, yeah. just keeping scripture and the Lord as the center of what you're working for together. I think, I think Papa puts it in the book, something like uh, pursuing the Lord through your spouse and actually, uh, and it's kind of tough to figure out what that means, but also it's um, trying to love your spouse in a way that leads you both growing in a spiritual way. Mm. It's really interesting, Justin, as you talk about that, because I think one of the things that I took away from the book is I reviewed it these last few days and, and few weeks, and and I've read it before, but it's been a while. Um, and I think it's really important for, for either couples that are getting ready to get married or couples that have been married to go through this. Um, but it, it really did a, a, a allow me to be aware of the role that a husband does play. And that, that's obviously my role. It's, it'll obviously be your role and what it means to move into your, your wife's life in a way that um that that he, he says in part two the building blocks of a marriage is grace commitment and acceptance those are the three words that he uses and he talks a lot about forgiveness and what does it mean to have true forgiveness and for those of you who are looking at on us this evening <clears throat> one of the things he says dr crab says uh, pop pop he says reading this book will not guarantee a dramatically and rapidly changed life um, I think we we all want to have those answers. Give me the answer and I'm going to do A. I'm going to do B to make this work. Well, there's more than that, although he has some of that in this book. The second piece is he, sa has, he says, sincerely trying to live by the Bible is sometimes hard, confusing, or disillusioning. And I think when you really put the Bible is in the center of your marriage, um, it, it it's going to open up things that you were never aware were going to be there. Um, he says then in number three, commitment to living a godly life in no ways, in, in no way guarantees that your marriage will work. Do we have any guarantees that your marriage will work? I mean, as you guys are getting ready to, to go into this grand adventure of marriage, which I think is what the Lord intended it to be, what are you thinking? What, what are you excited about in the, in the marriage times coming up? And then what, what are you kind of scared about? I'm excited to have the person that I love be around all the time. And that's also what I'm scared about is to have the person that I love to be around all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to, uh, like she said, have the person around that I love all the time and to be able to grow with her and start a family and grow together and uh build see life. build a life see where life takes us um i'm excited for the adventures that it's going to bring but the adventures are also scary i mean you bring in you when you start having kids you bring in kids that's uh, something you're gonna have to learn to deal with it's gonna be n nobody knows nobody's ready for it when they have them i mean they say if you if you wait to have kids till you're ready you'll never have kids so that's something that you can't really be prepared for you just got to do it and then um the other things are i really wouldn't say i'm that i can't think of anything specific that i'm that worried about um i know there's going to be tough times but we have to we have to work together through those times. We're making a commitment before God. That's really what the, the center of this is. Um, and as long as we keep pursuing God through each other and we keep leading each other along the spiritual path, I think that any tough times that arise, we can, we can work through. Absolutely. The scary thing is the tough times that we don't know are going to happen yet. Yeah. And You've had a chance to experience some of those with our family in the last yeah. couple of years, yeah. those un unanticipated um, 
hiccups, <laughs> um, but they grow you closer. And, um, and that's something that I think is so exciting. One of the things that Pop-Pop used to say is when you're standing in front of each other saying your vows, you're both, you're, you're, it, it's kind of a dad used to call it, Pop-Pop used to call it the tick on a dog um, relationship where I, what can I get out of you? I, I want to just get as much I can out of you. And he said, the problem with most marriages is we have two ticks and we have no dog. And so there you got, you got a big problem with the two ticks and no dog thing. So as you guys are getting ready to go into this, one of the things I talked about earlier as we started this tonight was what we want to do with Larger Story is kind of impact your generation, those the, the, the younger generation who is really going to be responsible for what's coming up and, and, the, and the next generation, the kids that you guys have. And, and, um, one of the questions I think I would ask is, is Joe and Justin, you've gotten, you got a chance to know pop pop pretty well as well, but, um, what, what has been the impact on your faith getting a chance to just to, to, to know your grandfather and, and your grandfather-in-law, <laughs> um, before he died, what, what, what is that? How has that impacted you guys? Um, and, and what is that old man? And he was, he was the old man. You guys saw him as the real old man. Yeah. Um, but you also saw him a little bit younger too, where he was, he was a little bit vivacious and ready to go, but how has he impacted how you guys think or what's going on now? I think about pop all the time and I miss him all the time. Yeah. Me too. And for me, as one of the smartest men I ever knew and one of my favorite minds, I, uh, I miss that. And I think if someone like Pop-Up, who's, I think is so brilliant, so thoughtful, believed in all of this Bible stuff with his whole heart in a way that you just saw him give his life to it, then there's got to be something to it. Um, and there's, at least once a week, I stop and think, man, I wish I could talk to Pop about this. There's Me too. Something. Um, Me too. Yeah. So, yeah. For me, it was, I, I've never seen, until I met uh, Pop Pop, I'd never seen somebody really embody what it means to be a godly man up until that point. I've, I've grown up in the church, uh, but I've, and I've seen godly men before, but I've, I've never been able to really get close to somebody that really embodied it the way that he did. Um, it was just in the way that he talked and uh, how he treated people. Um, it was it was really impactful for me to see that. It, it really gave me a good understanding of what it truly means. Yeah. He was, um, he was very, very keen on you, D Justin, for sure. He, um, in his last times that he did some things for the family and you may have seen us, he, he, he was talking to Josie and he said, tell that boy to put a ring on your finger. He was excited for that to happen. And it's interesting because I look at both of you and I know both of your backgrounds a little bit. I mean, Justin, I know your mom and dad have been married for 35 years or, or how many years it's been. I'm 35. Coming up on 35 years, I know. And um, and Josie, your mom and I have been married for almost 30 now. Mm -hmm. And um, you you guys come from a, a a background of people who who have made marriage a commitment and who have said that no matter what happens, there's no back door to this. Um, how has that influenced you guys as you move into this next phase of becoming one? A ton. I think it's one of the biggest blessings of my life and also of Justin's and our life is to have the examples of all of these successful and committed marriages. Um, and that's not something that everybody gets. And to be able to see it lived out and just know that if they can do it, you can make it work. Mm -hmm. And it's such a, a blessing to have those examples. Mm -hmm. I would agree wholeheartedly that it's such a blessing um, getting to see that, see your parents live out that life um, 
and there was hard times. There's always going to be hard times, but them fighting through and always staying side by side, sticking together. Um, yeah. And it gives us good resources for if things get tough with us, we can go to you guys, we can go to my parents and you bet figure out how to do how to make this thing work. Yeah. One of the things that pop Pop talks about in that is, 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 is that exact question, how to make this thing work <laughs> because outside of the spirit, he didn't believe it could. He tells the story in the book of, of, he was writing, um, the beginning of this book and he was on a plane flying from somewhere and the, um, flight attendant saw one of his notes on his yellow pad of paper. Joseph, you know what I'm talking about. Justin, you probably do too. And it said, what is the goal of marriage on that pad of paper? And when I read that, the first thing, and I, I, your mom and I were reading that together. And she said, how, first of all, how could the, the, the flight attendant read his handwriting? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, a that's a great question. And, uh, but, but she did apparently. And he talks about what is the goal of marriage. And then he goes into, in, in part two of the book, um, the whole oneness issues where the oneness of, of, of being one, the spirits being, being one with the spirit, the soul oneness. And then he talks about body oneness and all of that stuff. And what would you guys define as the goal of marriage? I think it's to be known at your deepest levels by someone else. Hmm. That's beautiful. Share something that you only share with that person. Yeah. It's kind of terrifying. Kind of cool. But also kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think, J-Dob? I would say the goal of marriage is to um, grow and become one. Take two people and really grow together and become one entity in itself. <laughs> I love that. Justin, I can't I can't tell you how how grateful Kimmy and I are for you. And you'll hear me say this in a couple of weeks, but we've been praying for you since this one was born. And uh she's over there sitting on the other side of the desk in tears, wiping her face off the whole time here. So as she's hearing you guys talk and um we 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 could not be more excited, more proud and more pleased with the decisions you guys are choosing to make. And, um, and I think that pop pop would, would echo that. Um, and he would tell you right away that marriage is, is full of twists and turns and there's obstacles and there's deep water that you're going to go through. No one can avoid that. I don't think it's any, I don't think it can be avoided. And, and, and if you do try to avoid it, you're avoiding it by anesthetizing your soul to what's real. And none of us want that. So to go through those deep waters um, is something that I'm going to be grateful for you guys, because I know the two of you will cling to each other and the Lord to move through those. And um, I think without that, guys, you just don't have much of a chance. What did, why, why, why was the Bible so serious, so deadly serious about being equally yoked? Because if you're not, Boy, you're starting off in a hole that will likely get deeper. And um, and I'm just so grateful for both of you for the, the 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 first of all for the commitment that you've made to the Lord, and and then the commitment you've made towards each other. And um, we we couldn't be more excited. And uh, it's just <laughs> it's just amazing, you know. And um, I, I think Joe, you being raised in the Crab family. And reading this book, how, let me ask you this question. How many books of Pop Pops have you guys read? Two and a half. <laughs> two and a half. <laughs> I think that's a pretty common answer. He's only written 32. So most people say I, I made through two and then maybe a half. I, I couldn't get through that one book, but I got through half of that book. <laughs> They're that's, all, that's all I need. <laughs> 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 I mean, you can't skim through those. No. <laughs> his, his books are, are thick. Yeah, even if they're not thick books, they're they're deep, they're rich. They 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 go to areas that that force you to, you know, one of the things that my dad said, Justin, that is the 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 more of a woman that you have as your spouse will require you to be more of a man. 
He said that um, many times. I've heard him say that so many times. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so grateful for, I think, how you two fit. I think there's just a good fit. Um, and sometimes that's not the case, but but I think there's a good fit. And I think the fact that the Lord is the center of your relationship is gives that good fit an even better opportunity to, to reach its potential. And the opportunities that you guys have um, in being an example and the children that you're going to raise. And I mean, it's just, it, it's keep, your mom and I, Joe, sit here and we were going through your your pictures as we did all those, um, those uh, we did that video for you guys. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's just amazing thinking of you now, you're getting ready to get married. Yeah. And I, I remember carrying you out of the hospital when you were six pounds, six ounces. And um, it's just, it's just such a blessing to see. So I, we're, we're so grateful. And I, I, I'm sure I'm speaking for David and Teresa too. Um, one of the things that I think you people who are watching us need to know, Justin got a chance to live with us for three or months, three months or so during the whole pandemic quarantine piece when he was finishing up school at this Colorado School of Mines where Josie went and he was in a basement apartment and ran out of toilet paper and the whole thing. And then Josie got to got to move in with Justin's folks for a few months before she got her place in Oklahoma and got to know them really well. So this has just been a... Um, kind of a little bit of a fairy tale relationship up to this point. And I'm, I'm grateful for that, but I think it's also important to realize that it won't always be a fairy tale and, um, and there'll be hard times and there'll be deep waters and that's where commitment becomes the issue. Yeah. Yeah. We, we know that we've talked about it. This book sparked a lot of those conversations about the impending hard times. Um, Right now we're floating on the pre-wedding bliss and everything, and it's it's been great. Enjoy um, that. But we're uh we're in it for life. Uh, I, I made sure that we had multiple conversations before I proposed that this is this is forever. This is it's not you can't call it quits at any point. This is we're making a commitment. Yeah, no back door. There's no, no back door. And, and and one of the things that, that Pop talks about in the book that's very prevalent throughout the book is forgiveness. And he talks about false forgiveness and different kinds. But what does it mean to truly forgive when when you're hurt in a way that uh, that your spouse hurt you? And you guys will run into that. Um, but then again, that commitment and the commitment to the Lord above all else will carry you through. Is there anything you guys want to say? I mean, one of the things we're so grateful for this time is is... You guys are the ones we want to talk to with larger story. And the fact that, you know, you're my daughter and my soon-to-be son-in-law, you know, just is such a such a privilege to get a chance to chat with you guys. But we want to hopefully get an entree into, into your generation because there's hope and there really is truth, <laughs> even if sometimes it doesn't seem like there is. Yeah. And, and, and truth is true whether anyone believes it or not. And false is false, whether everyone's believing it or not. And um, and you guys, I think, are, are are starting your, Pop talks about this in the book, but you're starting your relationship off with the foundation that is built on the rock, because it's built on him. And that gives you guys a chance. And I'm so grateful for that. We are too. Yeah. yeah. Anything else you guys want to say to this group of people that are watching us and... Uh, um, as we get ready to wrap it up here, I'm so grateful for you guys joining me tonight. Thank you so much. I just got back from Juan Eats. He wanted me to tell you to say hello. And uh, so <laughs> we had a good time over there. And um, But uh, anything else you guys want to say? Um, I do. Just something that I'm grateful for is reading Pop's book and especially reading it out loud. Uh, there were a few times where I giggled just because I heard his voice. And that was him speaking and those are his words and uh, it's something I'm grateful for is even though I've only gotten through two and a half I have a, a lot of his thoughts and wisdom left untapped that I get to access and man that's cool he's left us with a ton of things but the biggest thing that he left us, uh, us with was his love we knew he loved us and he was crazy about you, Josie Lynn. There's no question about that. And he was pretty crazy about you too, Justin. Well, I was his favorite grandchild. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, I'm glad that we've clear, cleared that up. I'm sure you have a few other, by the way, your brother just walked in the room and he's thinking he might want to uh, refute that statement, but. Uh, no, this is my webinar. He doesn't get to say anything. <laughs> okay. Okay. He doesn't get to say anything. Maybe I'll do one with him at some point soon, but I just love you guys so much. And um, uh, I know here in a little bit, we're going to have a little time of prayer for your your big day coming up here in a few minutes. And um, thanks for joining us today. So um, as we as we finish up, I would say this is probably a book, The Marriage Builder, that we probably should all read once a year. They got it back there. I love it. And <laughs> um, and that uh, I think that's something that just keeps us keeps us honed in on what it means to uh, to be the the husband and the wife that the Lord's called us to be. So I just love you guys so much. I can't wait to be there with you in a few weeks. And um, uh, we're so for you. And the prayers will never quit. That's for sure. So love you guys. Thanks for joining me tonight. I love you too, dad. Thank you. Okay. See you guys.